Hey everyone, Nick Espinosa, your chief security fanatic here, and today I'm talking about buying personal protective equipment or PPE because you may have actually bought your PPE from the terror group ISIS. That's right. This is insane. And here's what's going on. Now this is coming from Ars Technica. <laughs> <laughs> I am just just bewildered by this because you know we all know scams are around and basically at the beginning of the coronavirus pandemic here in the United States at least uh, in March or so everybody was scrambling to get PPE for themselves or hospitals and all of this and so by virtue of that the scammers essentially took advantage this is one of the reasons why the COVID-19 cyber threat coalition is alive and around uh, you know to find these things but this goes above and beyond which is absolutely nuts. Here's what's going on. In a series of civil and criminal complaints and forfeiture notices released this week, the U.S. Justice Department has revealed that it has seized hundreds of Bitcoin and Ethereum accounts, millions of dollars, and four websites from known Islamic extremist groups that were basically using these accounts to f and funds to support terrorist oper uh, operations. Prosecutors say that the forfeited crypto assets from the groups, which include ISIS, the Al Qazam Brigades, and Al Qaeda, represent, and I quote, the government's largest ever seizure of cryptocurrency in the terrorism context. The cryptocurrency haul alone totals more than one million dollars, according to Chain Analysis, which is basically a blockchain firm focused on looking at these kinds of things. Among the jihadist fundraising efforts that the Department of Ju uh, Justice has killed, one, though, stands out as particularly interesting and brazen. Court documents detail how an ISIS agent allegedly ran a scam website for COVID-19 PPE known as facemaskcenter.com. Now, according to one civil complaint, a confidential source linked an ISIS facilitator who used the alias Marat Kakar with the operation of facemaskcenter.com, as well as four Facebook accounts that advertised the site. Kakar is believed to be responsible for managing multiple ISIS hacking operations. The complaint alleges that he received $100,000 from a Zubia Shanaz, an American woman, um, who had planned to travel to Syria to join ISIS and who pled guilty to material support of terrorism in 2018 after laundering ISIS funds via Bitcoin. Now, Face Mask Center claimed to offer FDA-approved N95 masks, as well as a wide variety of other PPE, including Tyvek suits, gloves, goggles, thermometers, and on and on and on. Their website read... And I quote, Face Mask Center is the original online personal protective equipment supplier and was the first of its kind. Now, it's not entirely clear to what degree FaceMaskCenter.com was an outright scam or whether it merely sold substandard PPE. The civil complaint against them states that uh, basically they were offering masks on the site that were produced by a Turkish company that did not meet FDA standards as advertised. When a U.S. customer contacted Face Mask Center asking to buy masks and other PPE for hospitals, nursing homes, and fire departments, the Justice Department says... Uh, basically, that uh, the Syrian national, uh, that a Syrian national based in Turkey responded with an offer of up to 100,000 uh, masks for sale, which basically is unrealistic given the scarcity of masks during that time uh, through the pandemic. So it's un it's unclear whether these masks were actually delivered. Again, this is according to the court documents. Face Mask Center also claimed to be run by sanitary experts and to have been founded in 1996. However, a simple registrar or who is search shows you that the domain was actually registered in February of 2020. So obviously it's brand new, nowhere near 1996. Now, aside from the PPE sites uh, seizure, the DOJ said that the IRS, the FBI, and the Department of Homeland Security Investigations Unit also dismantled funding operations for Al-Qaeda, uh, the Aziz al-Din al-Qassam brigades, and, um, and who is the militant wing of Hamas and others. But... ISIS appears to be unique among these groups, at least based on their behavior uh, that is indicated in the indictment and using a COVID-19 scam to raise money rather than appeals for donations uh, during the pandemic. The result is that obviously desperate customers went to facemaskcenter.com and they may have either been stiffed on their orders or they might have gotten substandard uh, orders and in, in return for actually giving this 
uh, website money, they may have unknowingly contributed to violent extremism around the globe. And that is absolutely insane. And so I'm very curious to know if any of my people, or if you're willing to admit it, did you at the mad rush at the very beginning of this in February, March, April or so go to facemaskcenter.com? And if so, what was your experience? Uh, you know, I'm not expecting anybody really to answer that. But if you did, I'd be very curious to hear that because that is insane. But that also, I think, underscores a couple of different things. One of the reasons why the COVID-19 Cyber Threat Coalition exists is because of stuff like this. We are actively looking to see those IOCs or indicators of compromise on potentially malicious domains, although this uh, domain wasn't malicious in terms of infection, it was malicious in terms of getting your money. But we also have to be vigilant. If it's too good to be true, or if they say something they have, or, or if they are claiming they have something in the middle of scarcity, then do your homework. If they're saying that they are, you know, have they been around since 1996, that's a very easy check on the website. You can go to any Who Is website, punch in the the face mask, uh, face mask.com and uh, you'll, you'll get that. So you'll get the actual creation date of the domain. These are the things that we can look at very easily, but it's crazy because desperate people might have been supporting ISIS and not known about it. And so that is your just bonkers news of the day. And hopefully nobody did. And please like, share, follow me here on Facebook and Twitter at Nick AESP. And please feel free to subscribe to me at YouTube as well. And as always, stay safe and stay online and stay away from ISIS. Thanks, guys.